Sounds Ladies really. and gentlemen, welcome back to the Strange Films Podcast. We are here. It's fucking freezing outside. <laughs> no kidding. And uh, I endangered both of your lives for driving up that icy hill. Yeah, that hill was something. Yeah, that's about Thanks, five minutes to properly now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I planted all that ice. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Went out there on Friday night with a bucket. Just watered yeah, it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm like, I'm too many to drive down that hill after this. I was like, I don't have, have to. You know, <laughs> actually, this whole week, um, the times I've had to get out, like, it really wasn't that bad going down. I think where it's, like, starting to melt now, like, mm. it's a little bit more slick. With, so this morning I had to go to the post office, and um, that was the first time my, my car was like, Whoo, I was like, oh, shit. And then yeah. coming back up was the same way. I was oh. like, oh, no. So uh, yeah, that's a good, like a thriller, like the film Sorcerer. It's like where you got in the jungle, the trucks are just literally about to fall over a bridge at any moment, basically. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah Yesterday I had to go on a roundabout. That was still covered in ice. Oh, no. So it was basically just like Fast and Furious just drifting around the corner going in. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's gnarly. Yeah, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, we we just embraced a uh, snowmageddon, and it was it was gnarly here on the, on the in the Knoxville, Tennessee area. It's So mostly past us the early 90s, 92, dude, literally. I've never seen that much snow here before. Dude, I mean, we've had a good snowstorm every once in a while, much. but that was like... This was consistently a lot, and it came out of the blue. And then literally. just the cycle of it, like, snowing, and then, then melting, then freezing. Melting, freezing, then more rain on top of it, then yeah. freezing, and then more snow. It was just like... What the hell is going on here? But yeah. it if very... this is what it's like to live up north, I'm moving to Florida. There you go. Because um, I can't handle this year after year. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm happy uh, I was able to get out of Philly before the snow hit, because I would have been stuck up there for a while, I'm sure. Because uh, it was starting to snow right before I left, and then I got here, and then just a few hours later, like the first like major snowfall started coming down, and... And then here we are. So I've been Dude. been like cabin <laughs> fever all week, all like just stuck at home, nothing to do, and and so yeah, this is the first time I feels like it feels a lot longer. I know it's been like only it's only been a week. It's only been a week, but yeah. it feels a lot longer. It does, yeah. No, it's definitely kind of feel like a drawn out pacing of all yeah. the time. So yeah, it feels like just yeah, it feels a lot different right now. Yeah, so it's a whole new world now. Mm-hmm. Anyways, but how are you guys doing? Doing great. I'm doing fantastic. I mean. Yeah. Doing for a lot of, COVID 2.0, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, a lot of story writing. Just been, yeah, just kind of been in my element through the time. So I've certainly enjoyed enjoyed all that. All the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, let's uh let's unwrap it then. So your what what story or how's the writing process been for you, man? It's been great, man. I've just been kind of writing out a bunch of like, as I already have like the scenes and the uh, way to get to point A to point B progressions down, and I've just been mapping out all the characters and I've been kind of writing out different details every day about them. And I've got kind of had that final conclusion to where I know exactly kind of just what the whole thing's going to look like for the feature film mostly. And then, mm-hmm. I, like, once I kind of do that, I'm letting that energy kind of soak into, like, a, lot, a bunch of short film projects. Okay. So I learned that's how, like, yeah, a lot of directors, like, do, like, a lot of their short films. Like, they'll make a feature film, and then it's like they just still have a lot of momentum they're running off of that. So they got to get some short films out of their system, too. I mean, I think short films are always a great way to, like, just keep sharpening your skills. You know, so it's too. like, and you can do a lot with a little in short films. So it's you like, really can. Um, and it's just like, and, and, and you know, and again, it's just a, a great way to effectively build your resume, which is why I'm mapping out a lot of too. just really just, yeah, make more content consistently. And yeah. Make that kind of a, a simple thing to do on the way. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah. It's like, I did so many short films for so long. Now my targets are features essentially, but even doing, you know, because I did Center State 2, and then, um, or He Comes to Kill, finished Center State 2, uh, and then, like, The Gifted. Like, those are all bigger projects for me. But then it's like, I had to crunch out Flamingo because it was just like, yeah. I, you know, I just need, I wanted to do something that was, like, not so epic, you know? Yeah. I just wanted to, like, like, I remember Well, you made like, rich quality films with The Gifted and He Comes to Kill, so it sounds like you want to loosen up also. You yeah, sometimes, out too. sometimes it's fun just to be like... All right, hey, I, we got like five pages here, and it only takes place in one room or two, you know, two rooms, and we can, you know, three characters, very minimal, but you can do something real fun with that. Yeah, you know? like one thing that I've realized working in so many different films at this point is, I love twenty-minute stories. Oh yeah. So instead yeah, of doing like too. one big movie, I like writing each thing as its little individual thing, and that's what shorts are really able to do. <laughs> I think that's a perfect yeah. runtime too. Twenty twenty two minute range. I think that's exactly what I'm aiming for for all the short films moving forward. I, th- I think that's a, that's a wonderful running time. Like even with like dramas, like I'd love to see dramas that aren't an hour long each week. Mm-hmm. That sounds so much more digestible, and just. I mean, like a lot of you know, people have short attention spans, so it's definitely good to have. If you can make a short film that's really really good in like a ten to twenty minute range, then. 
you I, you're like that's a really great spot to be in you know mm -hmm. i find it crazy when um you know you can make a short film that's like three to five minutes long and it's just like mind-blowing too you know yeah it's like, that's always amazing but right? yeah. um but normally my shorts averaged about to be about 10 minutes and then i started getting like 15 20 minute range raven was like 20 almost 30 minutes that's so. the way my creative ideas and i think both of us are like this and i imagine i think all of us would be i think it's like three to five minutes almost seems like you almost seem like you want to juggle more than what you can do with that time and, and the way you we particularly operate like, yeah, I think I just get really ambitious even with the short films. So yeah. It tends to be... Ambition kicks in. you got to make it a little more epic and grand. Yeah, yeah. That's why I like the... Yeah, 15, 20 minutes is like a good spot like to be in. I really like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think... I, I would like to do another short film, but, you know, I don't know. Go back to the writing thing. It's like... <clears throat> Feature films are really kicking in too. Yeah, in a lot I'm of just, ways. I'm really. It's just the motivation. It just feels so realistic that it's just like, well, it just feels like I'm obligated to at this point. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, I think if the right idea came along, that's why it's like I'm excited for like your short film ideas because I'm like, okay, I can jump on that. And yeah. Do something fun with. Well, that. Let's just jump on that and just see what but, builds from it. You know, in a lot of ways, I, I think you know, like we, we've always talked about how every every process feels like you kind of get to a kind of completely different point at the end of it. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll just see what happens as we go through all these short ideas. You know, mm -hmm. and then we'll, as we build up to this feature film too, I think a lot of our feature film ideas will come together as we make these short films. In a lot of yeah. ways, it's like the writing will be there, but I think just effectively. Just like the particular ways of how we want to direct everything, like it's already mapped out in my head. But just taking action on it, it's like okay, there's are like a framework. You know, basically you're basically laying out for your feature length film with your shorts. Yeah. Again, I think about a lot of your shorts for influence. Even like you know, I really think about like Pandora's been coming back to me a lot lately. Yeah. For example, I know you love just, that movie. Well, yeah, it's because it's just a wonderful like mind bender, and I mean, it really is just a. Uh, it's really entertaining the entire way through, and just consistent. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, like you're onto something really cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. you often, always are your projects. It's a yeah. carnival, man. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, it's definitely a madhouse over at the Strange Films land. So yeah, man. Um, Lucas, what I was I've been talking about writing a lot, even even on social media and stuff. But like, what what do you think, or what's your writing process like? You know, when it comes to getting your stuff out. So with me, I don't write in a linear fashion most of the time. What I do is uh, a lot of times my ideas come to me like when I'm at work mm -hmm. uh, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I scenes themselves come to me in their entirety pretty much mm -hmm. and i just imagine these scenes and sequences write them all down and then try to figure out natural ways to connect them from there yeah that makes sense yeah something about like kind of like being and wor working for a while and you i think ideas almost come to you when you're not fishing for them at all in a way so exactly. it's all i like to have like a notebook around for those kind of occasions yeah I, yeah that, that happens to me a lot too i i've over the years i have probably about three notebooks just of random just ideas thoughts you know like scenes whatever characters whatever it is and i always mean to go back and look through it and to be like okay what can i pull from this and now you know try to build something out of it like a lot of the times the things that come to me first are the ending yeah like yeah. that's what happened with stop that's what happened with uh the script i just wrote that we're going to be working on in a couple months uh Ooh. it's just i love seeing the conclusion of things and i love seeing how i can like reverse engineer the story for yeah that. that's mm -hmm. a big part i mean conclusion's huge i mean that's literally just the act i just call that the aftertaste essentially it's like when you walk out you're, you're there's nothing louder than the ending exactly. yeah and and that's kind of where i'm at right now with this new script because normally i tend to if i start a new project i start from the beginning and i just like work my way through it but this new script i've had the ending in mind for the longest time and like a lot of scenes that lead up to the ending and then like i have a really kind of like a sprinkled vision of like the middle and then i know how to open it but it's like i'm not as confident as far as starting it and going through the middle first so i'm like let me just write this ending out and i've been writing like the three fourths mark and up to the ending um and it's just been coming right out because it's like it's, it's exactly what i knew i wanted to do with this so now i'm like once i get to that last ending mark of the final page then i'm like okay now let me pick up the beginning and work my way how do we get how did we get there you know so yeah. it's kind of it's like, interesting my biggest struggle is the middle part of yeah those stories always because yeah I, I, it's almost always i get the ending first and the start second <clears throat> mm -hmm. and then i just have no idea how to fill in that time without feeling like i'm wasting the audience yeah time at the yeah same time. makes sense it's all about pacing in there and it's like yeah it's like how long you don't want to bore the audience if it's like you're dragging a character out so long or a scene out too long. And then, like, you don't want to keep doing the same ex you know, exposition over and over and over again, like explaining what's going on because, you know, you already explained in the beginning or whatever. So it's just like the middle is always tough. Yeah. I, I, any 
previous feature films drafts I wrote, it was always at 30 to 60 page mark where I just kept stopping, deleting, stopping, you know, <laughs> like trying I, to push through, you I know. I find the middle parts are often what come to me the most when, like, kind of how you describe the process of like, okay, coming to me in aha moments while after work or something, you know, like, I feel like that's usually how the middle parts come. But then I start kind of living in it for a little while. Then it starts to feel kind of second nature, but then I get to that point and then that's where I get challenged by actually how to, be, how to open the scene. I think I have mm. almost the opposite dilemma by that point because it's like, wow, I have these ideas, but I'm like, I have no idea how to suck you in right away. I can kind of just make moments happen when it's a little more just like ingrained, I guess, the world buildings in grain you could say mm -hmm. like there's one script that uh, i was writing a couple years ago that i knew the entire story but actually getting the characters to be what i needed them to be was the hardest thing like i knew how to write one of the characters yeah and then the rest of them i was just like i, I have no idea well, it's what almost like you, it's almost like there are people so different from how you are so it's like well i don't know how to interpret this mentally i ne actually need to get out and, like just interact just do stuff or learn like i don't know just take in some just yeah, just take some new new information and then come back to it later and that's typically like yeah just so like i guess like you've always described it as just like well i wanted to pick people that i really don't want to be close to in a way but i do even more in a mm. sense too it's almost like an overwhelming fascination about it so i've taken like, i mean i've always been like kind of like a real social guy and i've worked in you know food service and customer service for a long time so like especially being a bartender or just going out and being social it's like i picked up a lot of character traits over the years that i've written into my characters and like even like things i've heard or said or or whatnot but then like uh yeah when it comes to like writing despicable characters or like really uneasy situations or whatever like that's when i try to just get a little a little bit more creative I'm like what what do i don't want to hear or think i would never see or hear in real life you know like just yeah. you know i and i think that's where i have the most fun with it because well, that's a great momentum yeah. that's a great way to look at it honestly because it's like well that's the best cinema it's like i mean i think that's the best outlet to explore mm -hmm. insane characters literally that's that's a great motive yeah I think, for so i just watched movies. a movie called uh the passenger on amazon prime have you heard of that yeah. dude did you see it it's fucking epic dude it's so good it reminded me of blue ruin a lot um oh, yeah, that's a good one but Holy hell, Kyle uh, Gallner, I think Gallner. I don't know know how to say his last name, but he's uh he's like the lead guy in it, and that movie was exactly like that kind of situation. It's like you, it, it, it's a small town feel, and you just see something horrific happen, and like, you know, this guy takes this other kid on like this wild ride essentially, and you're yep. just like, oh shit! It's like he's just doing the unthinkable, yep. like, you know. And it's just, <laughs> but it's a very real situation. Like yeah. anything, like that could happen in real life, mm -hmm. but it's like. That's uh, it, it's, I highly recommend it if you if you get time to watch it. It's a thrill, but yeah, that like I, I got that really inspired great. watching that. I that was sounds like, awesome. Yeah, as far as like a gritty take on movies and screenwriting and yeah. stuff. Yeah, well, very cool. Yeah, <clears throat> um, I've been watching a bunch of random movies for the last couple Dude, weeks. I know Fargo. I, mean, I did rewatch Fargo, yeah. and oh, that that's a perfect yeah. masterpiece. I watched really that quite recently too. It's perfect and really perfect for the occasion. So. Oh yeah, <laughs> totally one. perfect movie. I love that. I, I've only calling. seen it once before, and I, I fell in love with it. That's just time, one of the best but... screenplays. Just I mean, it's hilarious. It's dark. It's, it's just so, so funny. Yeah, it's it's very amazing. Dark. It's very small. Like it has a great small town atmosphere to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's one of only two movies that uses a wood chipper for what it's supposed to be used for. Yeah, that's right. Holy you know, moly. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know? that. yeah, it's yeah, a, it's a uh, Steve Buscemi is, oh, is a, a of legend. course, amazing. He's a legend. In that. All the conversations in the car, just like, that's a founded conversation, man. That's a guy. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like, yeah, there's just total opposites. Just, yeah. yeah. And I love that opening. It's like where he, they're in that, that bar, the, oh, you know, it's and how it's just, establishes dude, this crazy plot. Yeah, totally. I mean, that's not even, even a true story. Like the, like it says <laughs> yeah. in the beginning, it, it literally lied. The Coen's literally lied to you on that's purpose. So funny. Some people actually went out searching for it. In the really? Location. Yeah. I think they wanted to see if, how many people would do that. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's cool. about a hundred people did. Huh. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. They actually got um, lost. <laughs> my favorite scene in that movie is whenever, uh, Steve Buscemi has the ice scraper. Oh man. Uh, he goes yeah. to his car, throws yeah. it away. <laughs> Damn it. I still got to do this. Picks yeah. it up and goes back at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, that's so hard to even say. I love the confront down between Steve Buscemi and the grandfather when they're up at that. Uh, that's so intense. Yeah, like, just the way that all and so unpredictable. I just, I think that movie just shocked me at how freaking unpredictable a movie could possibly be. I'm mm -hmm. just like, dude, that just broke the rules for me in so many ways. Yeah, it totally. Um, it, it's definitely got like a wild nature to it. It's like it's you really don't insane. really know how it's gonna unravel because like it's just like a boiling point, you know. And she's like tracking them down slowly, but like, yeah, and um. 
uh, what's I love his name? Does it come into like thirty minutes in? It's like first you're just yeah. with the crooked people first, and so mm-hmm. then you get the the decent per- character yeah. in the midst of all this. And I love uh, William Macy's character, oh, dude. Man, he's, he's such an asshole. He's an asshole, and I just love like how awkward and uncomfortable he gets. You know, like when when she comes in and starts to ask him a question, he's like very oh. anxious. Yeah, it's very, hilarious. Very anxious. Yeah, he's really a dark comedy, like mm-hmm. the way it's portrayed in a way like that. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Peter Stormare. Like I watch that, it almost just feels like it's like Ryan Gosling's insane uncle or something. Like he looks a lot like Ryan Gosling. Okay. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it reminds I me of that, that drive. I think about drive particularly. Yeah, yeah. See that. it kind of has that insanity, very quiet, like very just quiet. Like, kind of the opposite of Steve Buscemi, who talks way too much. Peter Stormare is just like silent as can be, mm-hmm. just speaks whenever it's like a, a, a crazy moment, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a wild ride. But I I, I saw that good. on streaming. I was like, eh, let me rewatch this. I was yeah. like, it's been a while. Oh, you also watched what I'm really fascinated by, which is the town by Ben Affleck. I've never seen. You never that. seen the town? I've never seen. Oh, that. Dude. I'm so curious. I love the town. Oh, it's nice. in my top 100. Seriously? I, oh yeah, cool, dude. Dude. Ben Affleck directs it, and dude, that's um, awesome. Uh, great performance. But I actually think Jeremy Renner and um, John Ham. John Ham is that his last yeah, name? Yeah, John Ham. Yeah. They they steal a show. Oh I yeah, mean, dude, dude. Cool. It's dark. It's super gritty. Um, but it's like there's a drama kind of in in between it. But it, I mean, ensemble all star cast. But yeah. like, I mean, it's it's just a really great crime thriller kind of very very on the same tones of like the departed dude that's what it looks like it would yeah be like. that's really cool it's it set in boston too yeah mm-hmm. dude that's that's up. highly recommend I have really you seen the town oh dude yeah you gotta watch it man. It's, it's, always, it's, i've seen gone baby gone in uh argo by ben affleck those are the only two films of his uh, he's directed argo i thought was okay yeah, it was okay too i, yeah, I didn't it, i didn't love it i don't know much. if it just like went uh, over my head you know when i watched like it an, it was an okay thriller yeah. I, I kind of agree with you i remember seeing it just like a little bit disappointed that it was that because po- it was so popular yeah right? everyone loves that movie it was okay and i was just like i don't know it's just maybe it's like just the setting or the, politi- or the it was you kind know. of boring in the way it was telling its thriller uh, qualities. I think it was just way better than that. It's so, like Gone Baby Gone. I think that was my favorite one. I'm sure the town's gonna be better though. I, the, the, town, the town sounds a lot better. The town's a lot of fun. Yeah, too. it's and it's again very similar themes to like The Departed as yeah. far as like the drama and characters go. But it's just you know I don't know. It's it's just a, it's a fun ride. It's, cool and um, ensemble ca- great cast, dude. Great great cast. That's awesome. Yeah, I would I highly recommend well, it. I'm, that sounds cool. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think doing? what other Ben Affleck movies he's direct or that he's directed. I know he had a new one. I think I think he was kind of a, I think he had a misfire. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it was even called. Now it was based off a book. Apparently it was not very good. It was almost universally agreed not to be. But then he had a newer one that came out. I think that was a little better. Let me pull it up. He's had a few. He's had a few solid movies. I've. I've. I mean, I enjoy Ben Affleck as an actor, but I mean, I think he's a good me director too. too. Dude, yeah, no, he has a. Good he was going to direct the Batman movie, which I thought was going to be badass because I. I actually love him as Batman, but Live by Night's the one that was really bad. I and, heard that was bad. Yeah, yeah I heard that was awful. Then yeah. he did Air, which came out just this last. I heard year. that was good. I, I was haven't seen good. it though. I heard that was a bit of a comeback next to Live by Night, yeah. so I'm intrigued by that. Yeah, her air was good. Yeah, everyone said "Live by Night's bad." Yeah, so I, I trusted that. Um, yeah, no, I watched a bunch of random stuff because I get in the mood where I just want to watch random things. Yeah, you know, well, fun or whatever. Like, be, right? Like I rewatched um, Willy Wonka. Oh, that's a perfect oh, one, dude. dude. That's so timeless. Yeah, that perfect. was like so. That was one of the first movies I think I truly, truly just became obsessed with. Yeah. I think I watched that. I think for some reason every time I watch it, it just gets time. better and better. It does get better because I just mm-hmm. love how it comes perfectly as like a, it almost has like an all ages feel to it, but then it literally is like t- a tormented horror film too. Yeah, it's a weirdest, cra- it's, it's, it's the most insane balance. He's I've very ever dark seen. in it. Yeah. It's actually like his darkest soul thematically, but yeah. it just portrays it like it's, it's just yeah something way more sweet than that. It's mm-hmm. it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I always forget that movie's a musical going back to it. But the music's great. The music's, yeah, I love great. the music. Oh, I did. Oh, the music's amazing. Like I'm I'm like r- trying to learn. Um, Pure imagina- uh, imagination oh, on piano. Right dude, now. Like, that's cool I love that song. Like, doo, 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 doo. songs on bass, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, playing the song on piano. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, I love that. I just like, all the characters are just wonderful. You know, yeah. just, I mean, they really. It, that's, a, that, that's a perfect. Movie, I think dude. one of my favorite things uh, he does, it, and June Wilder says, and it, it's like when he's like one of the kids is like running off. I think he. I think it's a time where he's about to teleport himself, the kid that teleports himself. Uh-huh. And he's like, he's about to run, and he's like, wait, don't, stop. Like, because he, yep. he knows, like, he's, he's so just like, no, he's, <laughs> he's, he's such a punk. No, you can tell, the guy's a literally, no, G. Wilder plays it like a punk. He is, he's such a punk. In yeah, it, dude, it's no, great. he's a, he's a lo, like, a, the low, wait. like, the most subtle asshole ever about it. But he's so cool, too. Uh-huh. He, overall, he's so cool. Like, 
I can never not picture John as Mike TV after he told me that he played him on stage once. Oh my oh, gosh, wow. that's funny. That's, I didn't realize that. That's funny. <laughs> um, and Lucas, you'll get a kick out of this. I finally watched Across uh, the Spider Verse. Finally. Oh, finally, yeah, dude, that's a great one. I, I grew on me completely. Did you watch? Th- that's the second one. Yeah, the second you? one. I saw that recently. Okay, I yeah. Watched it, dude. I, actually, was way better. It's very time. good. I loved it. It yeah. was a lot of fun, dude. It's man. a great Spider Man. I mean, the, I mean, it's the, just the original Spider- animation. Yeah, I mean, the the first one was amazing, but the second one, I finally I'll sat down and watched it this weekend. I was like, oh man, just it's just like I don't know, it just feels good and it's a lot it of fun does. and yeah. I love Miles, man. Miles is a great Miles spot. is yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. And of course like um the the Spider Man Galore, you know, Spider Man Galore of just Easter eggs and everything yeah. in it. You're just like and I love that it is uh, technically all connected with the MCU movies, the Sony movies and everything. You're just like Damn, and I think that's your solidifies. That series cool. solidifies it for me. Spider Man still is my favorite superhero. Oh, yeah. Like, because I mean, and I yeah, like I mean, because I mean that, and I still love the Sam Sam Raimi trilogy, and yeah. I mean, I, and the game you were playing. I remember, I have a, like, I remember playing a lot of Spider Man too, and I remember rewatching a lot of clips. I think I had it back on the GameCube days. So probably uh, way well, different well, than what you're playing. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, there's a bunch. Of, there's, I've always played Spider Man games growing up. But I love he's the always room aesthetic like, of it all. Yeah, yeah. The new one's fantastic. Um, I was going to ask you, Lucas, because I know Blake's take on a lot of superhero movies, but, like, how do you feel about, like, a lot of, you know... The- so, recently, I've liked some more of DC stuff a little bit more than the mm-hmm. Marvel recent stuff. Like, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was fantastic. Still haven't seen that one. Dude. But I've been, like... <laughs> but with ever since Phase 4 Marvel, I've been kind of no, no, just, like... like I, I've been... Either I want to watch this or I yeah, don't. Yeah, and, and I most like, of the time it's I don't. I do want to see Guardians. It's just one of those things where it's like I just haven't, you know, been overly excited about sitting down and watching it. It's just like I don't know. Like I almost watched it last week, but I chose Spider Man. I was like, of course. I mean, you so. made the right choice, but yeah, <laughs> anything Spider Man, I will eat up. 100%, yeah, totally. But like. <laughs> One thing that bothers me is just how much William hates James Gunn. Dude, I saw that comment. And I was about to ch- uh, chime in too with uh, Slither, and then I saw you wrote all that out. I was like, "There you go, my boy Lucas." Like got he it. only has <laughs> one movie that I don't think is great. Which one? Uh, Super. Actually, I've never seen that all the way through. It, I think it's okay. Yeah, like, it's not great, but like it, he's such a good character writer like he's a great character writer he knows how to bring ensemble cast together he has great music tastes in it and i um, don't understand why he doesn't like guardians of the galaxy yeah that that's an odd one because guardians out of a lot of the movies i mean are, like it are has one of the better a great well, I style like, I, I think like, that's when they kind of start taking some tarantino influence into it into it all exactly well like, and then of course um his his suicide squad movie was, was fantastic really, did you watch really peacemaker great. I haven't. I've seen the first episode. I never finished it, but I mean, it, it fir- keeps getting better. Yeah, I, I mean, I liked it when I when I what I saw, and I think John Cena is actually perfect as Peacemaker. He really dude. is. Like, he's so great. Um, but no, I thought that show. I mean, even like knowing like what that felt like, I was like, that this is, looks really good. Yeah. I'm curious to see how Superman's gonna go. He's gonna he's making the new Superman movie, but uh, like, honestly, I'm way more excited about it than when. Uh, Zack Snyder was running things. Uh-huh. See, I, I'm a fan of Snyder, so I don't know. But like, I watched his um, four cut, four hour cut of Justice League, you know, and I thought that was actually beautiful. It was a really, really great movie. And it's I was, definitely I the just... best at directing a lot of the comic book films. I mean, from Watchmen alone, the director's <laughs> oh, Watchmen. cut. Dude, I love Dude, that movie. Dude, Watchmen is like that's actually one of my favorite superhero. When movies. I was young, that movie went over my head. I, I didn't. It's kind of a mind blowing movie. But yeah. then I rewatched it like a couple of years ago. I think it was during COVID. And yeah. I was blown away. The director's cut, particularly. Yeah. I was stunned. I'm like, wow, that's a magnificent it's story. An that was well movie, done. Yeah. Really well told. Like, I'm not saying that he has bad movies. Yeah, no, but, no. Like, I just don't love his style. He, I mean, he's a very particular style of things. You know, it's. It reminds me a lot of like Michael Bay with Steadicam. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he does a lot of the. the drastic zooms yeah 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 a lot of that kind of stuff um he's definitely a visual guy you know i mean he's like a hit or miss for me but he's got his aesthetic i think is very strong and i think he i i've like always kind of felt like there's a, a crowd for a big time because yeah. the way he does and it. i think I it's always hit or like miss too more style over substance yeah. yeah most of the time where i think james gunn has both mm-hmm. i agree i agree with that um yeah because zach snyder i will say he's a little low. bit more hit or miss like 300 was that's what i, I didn't thought, like i actually liked 300 back in the day i don't know if i would like it as much now, i thought that was like a style over substance i think I, I, 300 is the movie that kind of made me realize i think i i i get like sensitive to those kind of that kind of feeling in movies mm-hmm. where it's like I, i've always loved the balance of style and substance to be there like yeah. I, if i'm gonna get spartan stuff i'm just gonna go play god of war there you go <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, I just uh, I was curious because I actually just I just finished Echo last night. The the new I haven't seen it yet. It was that. all right. I mean, 
it it's definitely I think one of the better Marvel shows of recent. You know, did you um, watch Loki? I haven't seen season two. It's uh, so good. I, I I know. I keep reading, reading good things about that. I I love the first season. I thought that was really good. But um, the only reason I got super excited about Echo was because they brought Kingpin back and yeah. Daredevils in it. You know, it's just like just a small. It, it, and then I they broke the news that all the old Netflix shows are canon now, and I'm like, yes, because those shows are so fucking good. I am actually about to start Daredevil for the first the, time. Oh, you haven't seen it. You're gonna be blown, dude. Away. I heard that was a good show. You're be blown yeah, I think away. I've seen a few episodes. I liked. I, was, I remember that movie that came out in the early 2000s was not good. No. I remember that show cleaned it up, dude. This new Daredevil show. I mean, it, you know, like it's fantastic. There's three seasons. They're all bangers. The first one's the best, but like yeah. they're so good. Like the fight choreography in it is insane. But I'm it's also so gonna watch dark. like the Punisher too. Punisher is great too. Um, yeah, that was good. Punisher is really good. Uh, you know, they did Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and Iron Fist and. I heard the first season of Jessica Jones is good. Yes. I haven't. I don't think I. S- Did they make a second one with her? I think they made two seasons. I know the first season has David Tennant, and that's the reason I yeah, really Yeah, that missed. one's actually really good. Luke Cage was okay. Um, not bad the first season. I, I heard th- the Defenders was shit. Defenders was all right. Yeah, it's kind of boring. Did um, you see the uh, Travolta Punisher? I love that movie. Yeah, actually. I haven't seen that. I've heard that's a good one. It's actually really I'm, I'm, Thomas I'm Jane. Punisher. Yeah, that crazy. Yeah, uh, 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 Thomas, well, Thomas Jane as Punisher. Thomas Jane plays. Yeah, yeah. 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 John Travolta. He's, he's a villain. The villain. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. That sounds interesting. That's the oh. 2004 one though. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what. Yeah, he was saying John Travolta. Um, that was an earlier one. Yeah. Before, yeah, he's the villain yeah. in it, but like um, Thomas Jane. Yeah. Thomas Jane is the Punisher. Yeah, have you seen that one? I've I've seen it. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Oh, dude, I love that movie. It's it's badass. I remember seeing that in theaters, and I was like, holy shit. I did see that they did a follow-up like short film of that on youtube yeah dirty with laundry Jane or something Still, like, yeah yeah and it was really good it's actually really good too yeah it's My just favorite. a nice little random short they just did they were thomas jane moment has to be boogie nights i love it when he comes into the second half he's oh, just i forgot he was in there yeah, yeah no he's one of those guys you always you know because he looks literally different than he does in anything else yeah. in that but yeah i know he just kind of is the guy who just comes in and kind of screws up like everything metaphorically like uh-huh. like, like in the drug deal scene he's the one who goes freaking okay yeah, yeah good shot yeah yeah <laughs> My favorite movie of his is still probably Deep Blue Sea, just because I love how cheesy it is. Oh, I've seen clips of that. Yeah, that looks like it's hilariously cheesy. Yeah. But it, he's in the mist. I haven't seen the mist, and I thought it's intriguing. I've heard that's a really. Dark I heard one. it's a really. It, it's a good movie. I heard it's dark. Yeah. Watch the black and white cut. There's a black and white oh, cool. cut of it. Oh, that's cool. It makes the effects ten million times yeah, better because cool. they don't have to deal. I with think it. that's um, a guy directed Shawshank Redemption. The only thing I Shawshank keep Shawshank is great. Yeah, Shawshank great is good. One. I love Shawshank. Yeah, Frank Darabont. Yeah, he's a good director. The Green Mile, mm-hmm. yeah, the Mist. Yeah, and I heard the Mist is like the opposite. Shawshank Redemption is like a redemption. I heard the Mist is like very, uh, just very, very dark by contrast. Yeah, I, and I keep, I always hear like there's like a kind of a conflicting uh, point of view on the ending. People either love or hate it. And I that's, love the ending because I like really. I think totally I, I don't know the ending. Yeah, I'm not gonna say, but I think I know. I've heard how it ends, and it sounds insane. Oh it, man, but I, I want to see how it goes. I want to see how I want to watch there. it. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I want to see. I can that see too. how it's, it's definitely controversial. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm gonna hopefully start back in your uh, stack of movies oh, cool, this week. Man. Well, I can't wait to see where you keep going through the artsy mode. Of, I mean, like I, 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 I think this go. last couple of weeks was just like kind of more like casual fun moods. Dude, of, yeah, man. You know, watching things and well, then like, you're feeling. And to backtrack know. a little bit on the Wonka topic, I was curious. Did you guys see the Charlemagne one that just came out? I have, no, I have no interest, but I was curious. If I you don't guys have do. any interest in watching it either. I don't to be think honest, it looks nearly insane enough. No, it, yeah. it does seem kind of boring. It looks like it really kids. Well, well it has kids. the same director yeah. as like Paddington. Oh yeah, but and then I, I keep seeing. One. I actually do see people liking the movie, so I'm like, yeah, like people say not it's that harmless fun, but yeah. So I, we I already got Gene Wilder, man. <laughs> yeah. Johnny Depp already that. remade it. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, and that one's trash. That too. was really yeah. bad. Yeah, that, that was really not bad. good. I have a. I have a bit of a soft spot for that. One. Oh, do you? <laughs> like I spent a lot of time watching it growing up, so I kind of get that. But yeah, no, I grew up with them. I was like, it's honestly not a good movie, but I, I, I it's still well, a little nostalgic. Leagues above it uh-huh. in every way. Yeah, G. Like, Wilder's just <laughs> way. I discovered that one. I was like, oh, it's like sure, it sends the Johnny Depp one. Well, then I saw um, the guy from the Bear. What's his name? Jeremy Allen White. Yeah, dude. I, like I saw someone's come up to him like you should play uh if you you, know, you should you be, Willy, be Wonka. Willy Wonka. He looks like like they did a side by side comparison of him and Gene Wilder, and I was like. Damn, he does look like a young Gene Wilder. Like I could see him as really Wonka. Like, and then I saw a clip of Gene Wilder when he was old, and it, they asked him, "How do you feel about rebooting or remaking um, Willy Wonka?" And he was like, "Disgrace." <laughs> he was like, "No, <laughs> never." And of course, I did him wrong on that. But yeah, <laughs> of course, as it goes. But I don't know. They should go another darker approach of Willy Wonka. They really should. Make it into a horror movie. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Mickey Mouse like, could be a horror it? movie now. 
That's actually two. Two. two who would who would be the dream director to direct the Willy Wonka adaptation? Mm, Ari Aster. Ooh, that oh, would be perfect, dude. Yeah, actually, that's actually perfect. That is perfect. Oh, I couldn't think. Yeah, that couldn't be better. Yeah, yeah no, honestly, I can think of one better than that. that actually, A twenty four. I couldn't even see Robert Eggers, Robert Eggers doing it. Robert Eggers. I was about to say Robert Eggers. I, was like, I think no, Ari Aster's like, a better choice. No. He's a lot more of like a colorful type, you know, with exactly. his. And he can be subtle too. Like yes. he can be a long drawn out kind dude, of. Dude, I could totally see a hereditary Midsummer lens on on all that. And yeah, Bo was afraid. Totally. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. I need to see Bo's. Actually, I almost watched it the day. Bo was afraid. It's a lot. It's on streaming now. It's like three hours and it's a lot but it's actually i think it's a pretty great surrealist oh, piece God. yeah i gotta I it's really entertaining watch it. oh, i love walkie phoenix in it too but yeah it's just it's just like a, a crazy odyssey it's every time i see the three hour mark on a movie i'm like it can be a lot yeah it's like sometimes they can be slow yeah. paced that one goes by pretty fast i'll say that one pretty that one zoomed by pretty well for me okay but still yeah it's still a lot of a lot to ask like even casino i was like at first i was like do i want to sit here for three hours I, mean, like, I was sick deathly ill so I, feel I, like, like, <laughs> I feel like that movie's just literally excess the movie though i'm like yeah. dude it's like it's just like yeah i feel like that movie just like begs you to just take in its three hours just to feel yeah. how to feel drained by the end totally. literally that movie is literally the definition of a draining exhausting experience i don't think i could ever i mean i no, I probably could, but like I don't think I'll ever shoot for like making a three hour movie. I feel like I could see you making it. I will in time. Movie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it'll happen in time. I will in time. It'll come in time. Yeah. I'll probably do some totally. yeah, some kind of character drama epic. No thing. doubt. Yeah. yeah, it'll happen. It'll come. Yeah. And, and it'll be I don't know when I can't say when yet though. That'll probably be, I'd probably say by my my fourth I'd probably be like fourth or fifth film. I think oh. it's like it's gotta be like probably ninety hundred minutes for now. Yeah. Yeah, it'll build up. I would love to I, I feel like you much more Magnolia vibes, dude. Like, I, I would you, love a to three do hour like epic that. or something. I would love yeah. to do something like a Magnolia structure. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I was aiming for that with Fallacy, but I would love to do that with like a, a kind of a you know, just evolve and come back to that formula in time. Mm -hmm. I think I'll stick to seventy minutes as my peak. I don't want to go f past that. I'm Hell just yeah, trying yeah. to get to ninety right now. Dude, I'm like, that's yeah. what I want to hit. Ninety's a great. Eighty number. to ninety is my next target. That's and then, a great like, number. Because I thought the gift it was gonna be sixty to seventy, and I was super stoked about that. Fifty four minutes is like the runtime, but it, it's a solid fifty four, and I'm yeah. happy with it. I was, um, I was aiming for like seventy, but yeah, I would turn out like fifty. Yeah, I turn out like sixty-four, which yeah. is like yeah, not feature length. Um, but I'm trying. To, I want to get to eighty, definitely ninety, and then do a couple in that range, and then like I can see myself getting to like the two hour at some point. Yeah, two and a half when I'm in my my prime. But, Definitely. Like, Honestly, dude, and yeah. I, I, what I kind of sense coming with you also is like I'm. I feel like a sense of humor is going to be coming out of your movies more and more in time. Somehow I just sense that coming. It's weird because like I think right now my inspiration is leading towards. My next three projects are going to be like the the drama, the horror, and then a comedy. That's yeah. like the next big three I want to. You do. have an interesting balance of those three genres. About, yeah, yeah. I'm realizing now, who knows what comes up in between or whatever pa timing of things, but those are like the next. I feel like the big three I want to do. Dude, you know? um, I feel like you almost have a combination of those three in a way. Living in, I think all of my films. movies kind of have something like that. I mean, a lot of my movies still have like a. There's always a lot of dark material going on, but the characters have a lot of drama usually, and then there's always something quirky going on in my movies. So yeah. it's like I feel like they're like little sprinkles of whatever, but I want to focus on you know each element you yeah, know, in its own lane. No, I'm with you on horror and thriller. I think I'm like drama now. I think I'm like I guess I guess drama is the <laughs> yeah horror thriller drama type. Yeah. Um, which we're gonna be shooting a movie in Vegas in March, yeah. and that's gonna be more kind of like a Thelma Louise kind of style. I can't movie. wait to so see that's that gonna be of a that. little interesting, dude. Visually, I think it's gonna be insane. That's gonna be it's, interesting. Are um, you planning on getting like like deep into like like some buildings or like outside? Or are you going kind of far out? To the so desert? Cool we're aspects? hoping and looking. Well, we're we're planning on getting desert shots, which awesome. is gonna be really cool, like outside the city of Vegas. So it'll be a really cool like visual thing with that. Um, Getting shots, like I'm treating it like Center City, like how mm. I went in the city and like through the car and I like want to do Vegas kind of stuff like that, uh, but also walking around and getting shots like that. So it should be like really colorful and really cool and things like That's that. That's awesome. Um, without giving too much other details, there's a couple other factors in play right now for some locations that will make us look like we have a, a huge budget so, <laughs> so we're we're looking like uh it's it, it should visually be really cool well that's a lot yeah. of it man i mean just just find a nice backdrop and that is a lot of the richness in itself yeah. honestly it's just yeah i mean that's a big part about it so just, um and then in the story it's it's very it's not um there's some dark material in it but it's like the middle the good chunk of it's going to be kind of more of a drama kind of side like just dark drama and then like the opening and the ending are probably the darkest of it, like the and maybe a little bit of horror stuff going on. But like, it's um, it will be I think a different 
kind of pacing even from the gifted, you know. Oh, but it'll, it'll be interesting. I'm I'm excited about I'm it. I'm so excited, dude. Yeah. I'm so excited to see where that evolves from the gifted. Like, yeah. that's, just, that's always that's very. Well, exciting. it'll be a prequel to the gifted too, which man. is going to be interesting. Oh, that's so yeah, cool, so man. it's it's like takes it takes place um just a few months before the movie. Awesome. So it's like so you can kind of use your imagination in that. Yeah, but it's like that sounds pretty. We haven't really. I guess I kind of announced her here, but I haven't formally announced it yet, so I'm Oops. just kind of, yeah, sorry. Yeah, coming in time. Uh, but, no, I mean, people know about it. Um, yeah. But that's part of the reason I had to go to Philly, because we had not hammer down some of these details about that movie. Um, we're premiering The Gift in Vegas, and we're shooting while we're there, too. So it's just kind of like we had to get in touch with Ginger and a bunch of other people and get the script together and all that stuff. So, But everything's looking like it's good to go. So Awesome, man. Well, that, well yeah. that's so cool, man. Awesome. Yeah. So that's kind of one of the, like – take it easy for a minute and just do some PR stuff until we get there. Um, yeah. So it'll be interesting. I don't know. I'm, it, it's kind of overwhelming to know that I'm going out to Vegas to shoot a movie. Cause it's just total blind, you yeah, know, it's a blind, it's well, a it's blind like, sign. Well, that's going to be a fun part about it. It's just like, you're as adventurous as the film itself is about the location. Yeah. I feel like that's often a spirit that lives low key lives in a lot of films where it's like directors are going to unfamiliar territory and just like, well, it's just like you're feeling as adventurous and on the spot as maybe the characters are in an ancient situation. Yeah, that's true. And that kind of adds to the atmosphere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Instead of going there and like Hopefully. mapping everything out like a perfectionist, it's like you have the raw gritty about yeah. about you in a lot it's of ways. It's kind of like what I mean. What I, that's kind of how it happened with Center City, the first one. I didn't really know the territory. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Yeah, I just kind of went up there and just went there and just, just kind of did, did it. it off. You know, my instinct and yeah. it turned out really well. So. That's right. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's gonna be. a Look out for some fun things in the next few months. There's going to be some cool stuff coming out. It's building out. up, you know. Yeah, there's a lot cooking right now. Yeah, there's a lot cooking. I mean, it's like, and then I did, I've, I'm already starting the goal, like I said, helping out on other sets. Yesterday I did, uh, helped out on a film set. Right you know, on. That's the, awesome. I'm the DP for a new project. And, um, Great, man. That was oh, cool. cool. That was my first time. I've never helped out on someone else's that's set. That's so cool, And it's still man. crazy for me to even say that out loud. Dude, that's never, so cool. You know. Um, How would you like doing it? It was cool. I mean, like. For once, I wasn't the boss, so it was cool just to be yeah. like, hey, boss, what do you want? You know, it's like I was just asking, um, you know, I was I, – I set up – it was a real simple kind of shoot. The next shoot will be a little bit more complicated. But, you know, just bringing on my gear, setting it up, and then kind of making sure I'm checking all the boxes for yeah. him, you know, and, and putting my input, you know, from there. Well, that's really cool. It was a nice little collaboration effort, and um, – Good people, good times, and yeah, it was, it was just it was a fun process. Well, that's cool, man. I was and learning too, you know, like how he vision things and style yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, you totally have a cool. DP in you, man. I, I I just got me thinking, maybe that would be a cool collaboration idea in time. Maybe you DP while I direct another yeah. project. I mean, I've shot every single one of my movies uh, besides yeah. the Pandora. That's what got me Pandora, thinking. I was like, oh know? man, <laughs> do you like do you do you like directing your stuff better? Do you like to DP other projects better? Is there, does it feel? Do you have a preference? Well, I've always envisioned directing more because mm -hmm. i like directing but i do like filming like i yeah. love shooting um it just I mean, you're great people it, have dude. to like my style i think if they're gonna trust me yeah we well, got the DP, gritty yeah you know? so like you know i i mean i even i told him i was like you've seen my movies right he's like oh yeah i love them i'm like all right cool i'm like i only have i run this kind of camera you know and it's like i'm just very untraditional i think with when it comes to shooting yeah lot. so it's like if someone likes that like if you like that, then hell yeah, let's do it. You know, yeah. I mean, I'll still follow I your direction. But I mean, like, yeah, dude, I can but fit like, that I can in. shoot. Like for especially sure. for the short films, I'm like, I love that gritty atmosphere. It's like it's almost like too much of a clean richness may not even be the right atmosphere yeah. for some of the stuff like, I'm thinking about. Yeah, because like, like, I, I think your aesthetic would be closer. I love to shoot. I just, um, yeah, but I think ultimately, I would just I'd like to just direct and have someone shoot for me or something like that. You know? Yeah, but cool, man. Yeah, that was another thing I was talking about um, with Jordan actually, just like kind of how. What what roles do you think like you find best for you like suited wise like like for me I would love to just be director and have someone shoot have a whole crew to do other things and so I can focus on directing um, some people you know like I, I've learned like I don't fit in for certain positions you know it's like I know what I like best and I think yeah. what's more comfortable for me I think John even at some point told me that he's not a crew guy like as far as like uh a, like long hours of standing with like an audio or something like that he's more he would rather contribute more on the creative side like writing and like directing or something yeah. like that um so is, do you guys have preferences of like what you well, i kind of get that too think? I, I think i found in time that i i kind of had a similar similarity to john where i think i like the best on the writing and directing because i think that's something about me that really loves creative control a lot in a yeah way. and i think that um sometimes like yeah i think that's just something i kind of just loves in me just because i guess i just been yeah, I'm honestly building this for so long and my mentally in a lot of ways. So I'm like a hyper particular type. And John's I think is that way too, in a way. Yeah. 
Uh, so I feel like you have a little bit more of like a tech kind of gear side to you. So I feel like I, I'm not sure like if you like that, like certain roles or something like that. Directing is a bit much for me most of the time. Oh, yeah? Like I hate having that much responsibility because uh-huh. <laughs> you have to have your hand in literally every single part of the pie most mm-hmm. of the time. So I really enjoy just being behind the camera. And one thing recently, I love doing lighting, apparently. That's cool, man. Like, <laughs> awesome. You, could always need, you always need good lighting. So, I mean, but yeah, I, I figured like... I kind of got a sense from you that you like being on behind the camera or helping out with sort of you know any sort of gear and you know knickknacks and stuff like that. But lighting is a great great addition too. So I, do, yeah, I, I love just playing around with all the toys. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. And see, that's cool because I don't know shit really when it comes to gear. I just know how to press buttons and make things look good. But like I just like I'm just like yeah, that looks fine to me. You know, like and and I I run with it. But it's better knowing I have someone next to me like you who's like. Well, you you know, here's this, 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 this. Like, you can full in detail, like, explain gear to me. And I'm like, cool, because I'm not as good as that. <laughs> you know, like, I'd rather just direct. Like, I probably should have realized that a little bit sooner, because my favorite thing about Stop was whenever we got to the color grading stage, we, I just realized we it was already there. Mm-hmm. Because of the stark lighting that we had, we had, like, moonlight, the flashing ones in the background. Yeah. Everything already looked like it was real so yeah. we didn't have to change anything yeah it's true yeah um and i like i don't know i'm also thinking about switching to davinci resolve as far as editing goes Me and jedi already switched over did to you? It. you do you like have you tried playing with it yet it is so much more intuitive than my yeah. last one and it hasn't crashed yet well oh but you didn't run premiere though beforehand did you I've used it a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> See, I've been running Premiere for like eight years. So I'm like, I did a one month free trial. Absolutely hated it because yeah. there were just so many bugs right out of the gate. I'm, I had such a hard time with the gifted at, at the end of it. Just like it gave me such a headache. I'm like, I heard the director Jake Perry yesterday. I was working with. He was telling me you should switch it. Resolve. He's been using it for years and he loves it. And and he it's a one time payment. Yeah, he, he even said he's like the free version still gives you almost everything you need. He's like it's he's like it's it's worth looking into. So I'm like I'm thinking about downloading it and starting to fiddle around with it and and just see how it feels because I'm like I don't know maybe Premiere is not all that anymore. I've heard a lot of people hate it now, you know. But what one thing that I heard from a friend who him and his crew used Premiere exclusively uh-huh. and the second I asked him what sort of editing software do you use what do you recommend anything but what I use is what he told me <laughs> yeah it's a love hate relationship for a lot of people uh, do you use Premiere I do yes yeah. Adobe by far is my favorite system yeah right you now. like it yeah I love Adobe I mean I like Premiere I just I, especially because I'm really comfortable with it yeah but it's, uh, that's a lot of it too I think I just I trained myself on it throughout the, throughout the 2016 range and I, I just I'm just most well versed on it by far that's yeah. a lot of it yeah, and I raise a lot of a lot of directors I admire or use it too. So I find that really cool. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like yeah. DaVinci is the fourth editing software I've used. Yeah, because I've used Filmora, iMovie, and Premiere for like a month. Uh huh. It's by far the most intuitive for me so far. Yeah, in I've college I was one. using Final Cut Pro, um, which pretty similar to Premiere, you know, as far as like the the, the button, you know, the sh- hotkeys and shortcuts and just like the layout of things, but. Um, when I went when I worked at the news, they used Premiere, and that's kind of where I got introduced to it. And I was like, "Oh, I like this a lot better." And I just kind of haven't turned back since. But yeah, I don't know. I might try DaVinci Resolve. Just trying to. Yeah, for a great word. So yeah, I'm I sure. Mean, I'm sure it's just as great, yeah. if not better. Jedi said he was able to switch over really quick. Yeah, because it's a lot of the same systems, just more stable. That's good. <clears throat> um, okay. Well, what else is? going on with you guys what are, any hot topics we should um, discuss debate yeah, let's, uh, let's wrestle here for a second uh, I mean we've taken on a lot of movie stuff I and mean, we can I can go on more about movies or we can take it to music or any, another form of arts or we can talk about your Philly trip some for the last little bit uh, well Philly was a uh, Philly was low-key this time mm. really I mean it was cold up there this time I I mean, bet. it was cold and windy <laughs> the whole fucking time you said but... you got out right before the snow right yeah okay, right before I then. left um, did you see that Wyoming was colder than Antarctica last week for a I couple days. I did not days. Oh, see that. Man, no. I'm not surprised, but wow, that's insane to hear that yeah. like that. Well, it looks like fucking Antarctica out there. It's just yeah, like, here it does. Like, it's crazy, crazy dude. Again, it's, I, just, it's the early '90s, so we had it like this. Seriously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's cold. Yeah, it's. 
Weather's been shit. Um, but no, it's just kind of low key. Hanging out with Frank. I mean, I give a shout out to Frank Aguilar. He was just on the last episode of the podcast, and um, you know, we just kind of hung out, took it easy. We did a lot of business talk for uh, Vegas and whatnot, as I mentioned, and. I uh, got to see some Strange Films family, saw Eileen, Ray Bolden, and uh, the chauffeur, two chauffeurs. We saw Dan and uh, Mike G from the new one. And, Damn it, uh, Bing, where were you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> we, were, we were like, oh, man, if only Bing was here, we had the trilogy of <laughs> chauffeurs here. Um, trilogy of dudes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, I heard you were listening to It Would Be Nice Again. <laughs> nice. I ran out of uh, new episodes of the herping podcast that i listened to because that's hyping me up for my uh -huh. trip to peru and i was like you know what yeah i'm gonna restart this this yeah. is fun john texted me and was like i uh, said that you were listening to it and we sounded so hopeful in the beginning you did. <laughs> <laughs> i was like we were we were very yeah, you hopeful guys got pretty far about 50 something episodes. we got like i think like 46 or something like that like it was we were doing a really good job and when did you start was it the 2000, or 2022 range you guys started yeah or? it was right before o he comes to kill yeah it was gotcha. like october 22 you went about um, to 2023 the yeah end of it. cut it off for like may may the summer i think and and you know it's just it was one of those things that um it became a job. It became a job. Yeah. Me and John, our schedules were just so, like, scattered. crossed and scattered. Like, you know, we had to literally squeeze it in to do it, which didn't really make it as fun. And then I had so many fucking things going on outside of that. For me, it was also an extra post-production job, you know, too, and marketing and social media and all that shit. So it was just like, we both just talked about it and we're like, you know, is it worth it? and then i was like well that's all right no worries and we just kind of just kind of didn't even put it didn't even say bye on the show he just no the stopped. last one was like a five minute update <laughs> from john <laughs> you know it's just like august has got shit going on and and then you just never hear from us again yeah, yeah. but i i kind of like it like that because i told john i was like we should just bring it back <laughs> like out of nowhere just yeah. fucking bring who it said, back who said it's over <laughs> yeah like and um I think because I I do love that show. Um, it it was it, I think it was a really honest approach at life, just like yeah. non unfiltered script about the ups and downs of life. Yeah. And it was a cool it was a cool like outlet, but it definitely it, it taught me a lot as far as podcasting goes. Um, how to get it uploaded on Spotify and all the all the things and socials and stuff like that. So. Uh, a big lesson out of it, but it was it was a fun show. Yeah, I wish it's really entertaining. It is. It's very and... entertaining. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, you guys sounded so hopeful oh, at the beginning. Dude. I know, I know. It's so sad, but maybe maybe we'll go back to it one day, John. Maybe. It, yeah. <laughs> so I'm right before the best episode of it right now. Which one's the best? Take a guess. The Blake Hall bump. <laughs> I am on the Blake Hall oh, bump, nice. but I still that was still our highest listening fucking right count. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm so close to life as a cruel bitch. Oh, that one is a good episode. That was, I think, our second best uh, in the analytics. But oh man, I feel that, like that's where the <laughs> the downfall. Yeah, started. that's probably where you start you start seeing a slip, <laughs> start going downhill. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you know, and then. What I really liked about the show was it was just so casual, it like you was. know, it was just two guys having a conversation. Yeah, and I th that's why I wanted to switch this show to like that as well. You know, obviously our conversation is a little bit more different, but um, this is more film based. Yeah. yeah, more film movie based, and you know, we can talk life and stuff like that around that. But like, it's I like I like just sitting here and chatting versus like doing a formal interview, you know, and like that got just, that got a little exhausting, you know. Uh, I mean, I still. You I'm do still that gonna, like events. Yeah, I'm still bringing on for special occasions and and people. And when I get like excited, I, and I want to do more in person interviews. The virtual stuff gets a little tedious, you know. It's like setting up times and this, on the computer, and then the, making it, sure both sides are recording. Yeah, and then like fucking um, Wi Fi issues every once in a while, or their issues are bad, or it's like. And they're filming on a phone or talking on a phone. I, I've got my whole setup, and the quality difference is <laughs> horrendous. So it's, um, I was like, ah, let me just, I want to do it here. I wanna, you know yeah. what, my favorite like interview that you did huh. was that guy from Scotland. Oh, yeah. Because you could barely understand anything uh -huh. in the whole thing, but he was so passionate about it. He that was, it was so, so passionate. Fun. He's a, he was a good guy. Um, it was funny because I think there's a moment in that, I might have, I can't remember if I edited it out or not, but there's a moment in that where he said something and, he was saying, I, oh, he he said, can I get a shout out? Can I give a shout out? But I thought he was saying like, I have something on my shirt or something. Like that. And I was like, I was like, 
something on my shirt? <laughs> He's like, a shout out. I was like, oh, a shout out. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, th- I don't think you I edited think I, that out. I think it's still in the episode. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was uh he's a good guy, man. God bless him. Yeah. <laughs> Scotland. Yeah, but I mean it's, I have people from Scotland, uh UK, um yeah, a few a few people from overseas, so yeah. But um I don't know. So anyway, I, I just like doing casual podcasting now. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. I like I like the ability. Cause, I mean you're great at just bringing up conversation and just a so weekend over and around. <clears throat> yeah, it's just work on the news for so long, you just kinda pick Media up communications. a lot of skills. Like, yeah. News and I did. I mean, a lot of public speaking in in college and learned. I studied communication classes, so it, I mean, I can improv a lot and I can just bring up something. I'm like thinking of more stuff as I'm talking, so it's kind of one of those things. Like, I like I, I hate awkwardness. And, yeah. You know, sometimes obviously it happens, but you yeah. Know, but I like to keep it keep it flowing. Definitely as as I can. You definitely got that, do you, man? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, so think about music. Have you been listening to any bands or artists lately that have captivated you? Um, there's actually one band I'm really listening to. I, I've, I've loved this band for a long time now, but I'm listening to Slaughter Beach Dog again. Oh, they're, yeah, I've heard them in a damn, while. Damn, they're just a great, great Yeah, you introduced them to me. Band. There's an indie, just an indie kind of, indie vibe, indie rock alternative, but like they kind of have like a folky vibe too yeah. as, as well. Um, but they're just a really mellow band. They've got a lot of great albums and, um, just they're from philly so cool. it's just like a yeah I, I really resonate with them but i've been on the hard kick with them lately so that's awesome dude. yeah yeah good good stuff from them. that's great man well mm-hmm. very cool you, you like you, you, you want to like do live concerts still sound appealing to you or are you kind of drained from all from doing a lot like of that? shooting live concerts yeah not that i wouldn't do it um I, music videos for that matter too music videos i would still i would love to shoot a music video i uh live stuff live events are just they're so like they're tough because you got to really make sure you know it you're doing and getting all the right coverage and everything yeah. and like that was the biggest thing with shooting the Murr show it was like super like intimidating just because obviously it's james murray but it's like i wanted to make sure like we're getting everything they're looking for and yeah the making sure you're not fucking up the shots and the audio and everything like that too so um yeah i just i feel like i'd rather direct something like that versus yeah. actually shooting it yeah just, i hear because i definitely know. want to get back in the music video uh, music videos too. are I, cool i would love to open that window it's um music videos are like Maybe like alternative rock music videos yeah i mean there's just not like a lot of bands it feels like looking for music videos these days no. or, or in this area at least you know no you really don't find a lot of because every once in a while i'll put out a feeler like hey someone wants some music video but i don't really get any bites these days anymore so yeah. but what was that one uh music video that you uh didn't want to release for like three years and then i released it yeah uh she's got that yum yum oh yeah i remember that <laughs> it's actually on the strange films youtube channel what? it's uh you know what's funny about that fucking thing is first of all it's a horrific story <laughs> it's a h- horrendous one of the few times i got over so overwhelmed my brother had to actually help me shoot it that's and right it. Got scared shitless because I thought the guy was gonna kill me. Uh, <laughs> like just, it was a horrible set and everything. Hold on, that's not something you can just drop and move on from. Yeah, I know. Well, I was hoping me and Blake would eventually get to that one and do a full commentary on it because the story is wild. Oh yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we haven't done a commentary in a while. Oh, I'm um, coming next Monday. Back. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, essentially, though. Long story short, the guy was like a little rough around the edges, you know, and he just kind of at the end of it, he's like. He he paid me, but he uh, he wanted to see my license, and I was like, "What?" Yeah, and I was like, "Uh, why?" He's like, "Well, I just want to make sure I know who you are." And he took a fucking photo of my license, and that scared the shit out of me. And I was like, "Oh my god!" I thought he, I thought he was gonna fucking. I was living in an apartment at the time too, and I thought he was just gonna roll up at my place one day and just be like, uh, "Oh no, I wasn't living at the apartment, but my address was still the apartment." So I was living at. A house down the street from where we shot but like i thought he was gonna go luckily that's that's why i think i felt a little better because it had the wrong address on my license okay. but i was like oh my god he's gonna roll up to that address and look for me you know but i never heard or seen him ever again <laughs> it scared me yeah he was a tough 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 shoot but that video what's so funny about it is it's just absolutely ridiculous and kind of really like poor performances in it but for some reason People like that fucking song, and it's on the original version on my first YouTube channel. It got a lot of views, and <laughs> it's like every once it just it's just for some reason people like 
like it. So I just like I'll put it on the Straight Films channel. Why not? I thought I was really embarrassed of it for a long time, but I was like, well, she's got that yum yum. So there you go. <laughs> oh man, I. That's how I feel about the original shape. Jesus Christ. I still haven't seen it. Yeah. You still haven't seen it? No, I always forget. Every time we talk about it, I just like, it's like I forget right after we leave. (laughs) It's so bad. How long is it again? 16 minutes, including credits. Send it to me and I'll I'll watch it because, yeah, I want to see why it's so bad. (laughs) But, you know, dude, like all of our first, I mean. I mean, the ending is glorious. That's the only part I will defend 100%. uh Yeah. Like I, I I love rewatching my stuff from college, dude. There, that's some horrendous shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I, no, yeah, we covered a lot of that. Yeah, that was fun to do the commentary. Your only on. acting yeah. uh, role. And Walt. Uh, well, oh no, uh, I had a couple in in college. Oh, oh, that one in the elevator. Yeah. Yeah, that one, Benny's Bunny. That one was a. Uh, that was rough. Yeah, man. That was rough. No, that one was really rough. Uh, then I played Waldo in a, a Waldo film I directed even worse <laughs> and then i did a music video to angels and airways music and it was just a montage of shots of me looking at nature and running around and yeah, that, you showed me that, that one's one. pretty awful too <laughs> it's like fucking hey, that needs to be preserved obviously. yeah i know it's some it's on the youtube <laughs> somewhere but, uh um but yeah i don't know so it seems like we're gonna have a busy few months, though. Yeah, I mean, no, I'm, I think so. I think a lot of we're creative buzzing. Work is I know. Really I'm buzzing a lot. We all are. We're so. gonna have uh, some projects that we're gonna make and collaborate on, work on each other with. Uh, I'm gonna be traveling again in March. Um, coming back, Frankencon in May. That's gonna be exciting. Ginger Lim's coming back to town, and we're presenting the gifted at Frankencon, so that'll be cool. Awesome. So. Hopefully, do a gifted screening in April too. I'm looking to do that at Central Cinema. That's so, so cool. no, didn't you do like a, some kind of reading of a screenplay recently while you were in Philly? Oh, that was kind of neat. Yeah, that's that. a cool. Actually, this is uh, something I wanted to present you guys too. So, um, yeah. So uh, when I got up to Philly the next day, Frank was like, "Hey, there's a an actors workshop here in town, cool. um, so we can go to it." And I was like, "All right, cool." And he was like, "Yeah, you just we had, you can bring in your own pages for the actors to read." Um, so I didn't know the logistics of it, so I just I was like, okay. So I printed off two pages of the gifted, um, where Ray Bolden and Ginger Lynn have a, that conversation. Mm. Did two pages from that, and I was like, oh yeah, this is me. A lot of a lot of gritty, you know, a lot of intense dialogue and stuff. So, but yeah, it was cool. It was like in a speakeasy library kind of deal. It was like a really cool little sh- bookstore shop, and um, there was probably 10 of us maybe it wasn't a huge thing i think he said it was like his second or third one he's yeah. he's done and it's really low key if, that's really cool um, but yeah it was like a few of us and a bunch of people brought their own pages uh mm-hmm. one guy brought 23 pages that was a, right that was a on. long one <laughs> you propose maybe we do something like that around here that'd be, that's I'd what i wanted to pick i would be so interested in that that's guy. what i wanted I do, to pitch. I do a lot of that on my own time i've never done that with anyone socially so i personally th- it was my first time doing it um oh. since college i've done script reads like that in college but um it was really neat, and the actresses who read the script, it was just super cool. And you got to see, like, you got a really good sense of people's writing style, how they how they write, and uh, the, the stories in it and stuff like that. There was a lot that was cool about it, and then there was a lot that I would have liked to see more out of and learn. Uh, I would love to see, like, if I ran it, I would have done a few different yeah. things with it. But that, when I told Frank when I got out of there, I was like... I think I want to do that. I yep. think I want to host an actor's workshop, like a, so a cool. script sh- workshop, whatever. <laughs> just get people in the same room every that. week, every other week maybe, and just just talk shop and, yeah. and like pre- bring your projects and we can work it out and then like, you know, let people read and stuff. So the question is, where do we do that and when? But yeah, that if you guys want to maybe brainstorm with me on that, I would. I, would, lo- I think that would be cool. I would love to. I, mean, I love doing like stuff that. like that. I would love to be. I would love to. Jo- I just love to make something like that a more social process. I think it'd be I cool to. I think it'd be good for like the local film scene. People would, I think, would gravitate towards that. Yeah, yeah, most so, definitely. Just gotta find a spot. But, yep, definitely, dude. Um, but yeah, it was neat. I I thought that was a. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, cool I was very experience. intrigued by that photo. So I was like, yeah, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but th- you know, that's. I like now. Now that I'm actively trying to do more things with other people, that's kind of that was a good like. It, it made me feel more involved in the community of filmmaking, you know, filmmakers and stuff. So, yeah. um, but I don't know. I guess that's it for me. You guys got anything else you want to? Uh, 
Um, to- I guess one more uh, thing I'll throw out. Just getting on the topic of shows, I was curious if either of you guys are the fan of uh, fan of the '90s Simpsons. I know you got the arcade game, so that might be an obvious. Uh, I mean, I was gifted that. I do like the Simpsons. <laughs> you um, were gifted. It. <laughs> yeah, really gifted. Um, so I'm, I'm realizing that's coming back to me as a huge influence for my filmmaking process. Yeah, actually. it might sound funny, but I seriously get, like it was around the time I was obsessed with Willy Wonka. I was also obsessed with like a lot of the primary episodes of the Simpsons. Just kind of taking in how well uh, paced out all the episodes. The earlier really, seasons like, are those are fantastic. Really freaking, they're freaking well. Yeah, seriously, yeah. up to about season midway, somewhere between nine is kind of where it starts. Yeah, to change. yeah. But dude, around from like three to nine, it's like prime era. Oh yeah, content. I agree with so you. So funny. I used so freaking to, well. and they're like they were film addicts. They, they, yeah, in the, in the creation process. I used to own. Like all those seasons, like the yeah, early I've... seasons. Um, I mean, almost every episode's a banger. They're so good. Um, I'm rewatching all. Of them. I'm like, yeah, dude, this holds up, dude. This yeah. is like so influential. I and mean, really, make, again, I think motivating a lot of my idea to make like 20, 22 minute short films. Oh, like, cool. I kind of want to pace it like a Simpsons episode. That's, basically, that's neat. Yeah, I mean, I've always liked the Simpsons. I just, um, I've never been like obsessed with them or, or yeah. you know, the show. But I've always like had a, a great appreciation. Yeah, and it's like a it. common. I think it's always kind of been like my like kind of like kickback sort of that yeah. atmosphere. Like I don't know, it just really, it's really laid back for me in a unique way. Yeah, totally. I've actually never seen an episode of The Simpsons. Oh, I have seen the movie. Uh, okay. I would say yeah. that the show episodes are way better. Totally, than the movie. oh, the movie's okay. Yeah, I was, I was always more of a Futurama person. Dude, I need to watch more. Futurama. I need to watch more Futurama too. The, I like the first season. It took me a long time to like get myself to watch it and then when I did watch it I liked the episodes a lot and I thought they were great but I never like stuck with it or watched you know a season or anything like that I just kind of yeah, it's kinda such the same a way. great show I've heard it's really good they, I want to check it out the revival yeah. came out or like they you know it's they, a lot more consistently good than the Simpsons yeah because cool. unfortunately that's the weak side of the Simpsons man it, it, it never really picked back up yeah and I'll say for an episode um, there's one where they literally come to Knoxville I always suggest that point of that one is like the first one that's oh, yeah? the, the crack the Simpsons bug I didn't know they did that one yeah uh, no it's perfect yeah like literally like because they hear about the World's Fair Park and they think it's gonna be like a Disney World thing so they come to oh, Knoxville yeah? thinking it's gonna be Disney World oh, that's it's crazy. boring it's boring Literally, it's kind of like it kind of looks like a dump. Actually, oh, it's, wow. it's actually that's, hilarious. That's the funny. Kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, no, right, no. It's like I hate this place. <laughs> it's perfect, actually. I oh, really like hate that. this place too. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that uh, episode where it's like every minute's like a different. Short oh or yeah, yeah. That's actually the follow up to that one. So oh no, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, that's yeah. a great that's episode. Very like it's almost like directly a Pulp Fiction sort of feeling. Yeah. Dude, I love that. that's a wonderful that's a cool pace. One. The pacing great. of that's so freaking magnificent. Yeah. Yeah, any any of those earlier seasons though, it, you can you can just dive into them. They're really good. So freaking entertaining, so funny. I mean, it's always hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember hearing that's where Conan O'Brien got picked off to go onto the night show circuit from. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Yeah, he was originally in The Simpsons. Yeah, there are a lot of people who involved The Simpsons. A lot yeah. of miscellaneous names. Yeah, a lot of cameos all throughout. Oh yeah, totally. And apparently they can tell the future too. Yeah, <laughs> literally, <laughs> Numer- more ways than many, more ways than one. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. Well, Simpsons. Good yeah, deal. Yes. I've been wanting to watch some more TV. I just, yeah. I just, it's hard for me to find the right show. Dude, it's yeah. hard to find the right yeah. one. Yeah, dude. I think a lot of '90s stuff is just like kind of coming back to me in a certain way. The yeah. 2000s too. Like, oh, like, I will say one more 2000s. Did you have something? Sorry, <laughs> cut uh, you off there. After we went to the uh, downtown Grill and Brewery the other day, me and John went back and watched like season one of Ed, Ed and Eddie. Oh shit! Oh, yeah. in one sitting. Oh wow! Yeah, hold up. It was fantastic. Nice. Yeah, I watched a shit. lot of that growing up. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I like that. I like that. And then, yeah, I, I watched uh, definitely spent a lot of time like Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network. All those old Cartoon Network shows up. were the shit. Yeah, the Dexter's yeah. Laboratory. Hey, mm-hmm. and I love like Hot Dexter's Lab. Hey, Arnold Johnny Nickelodeon Bravo were my favorites. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Courage Cowardly Dog. And, yeah, yeah. That <laughs> very was, horrifying. Actually, very, that's the very, that was uh, there was one episode that got me into like looking into horror more and it was the return the slab that was oh, fucking that's the terrifying hor- that's the dude. most horrifying one that of was all. terrifying oh that's yeah. a nightmare do you see uh-huh. like that show has such a big body count yeah it yeah. really does yeah <laughs> i'm like dang <laughs> i met yeah, the uh, i would push the limits for a t- uh, family oriented show <laughs> yeah i met yeah, the yeah. actor who uh, voiced uh courage yeah, yeah, yeah the, uh, smoky, smoky mountain, mountain and then i saw him again over ter- terracon in massachusetts <laughs> he knew ginger <laughs> and i was like hey I was like, <laughs> Yeah. That's one hell of a crossover. I know. I was like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> oh, did you see that they did a crossover between um, Courage the Cowardly Dog and Scooby Doo? I did not see that. No. Yeah, it's a new special that came out like in 2019. Oh. And it was pretty good. That's cool. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, I was good as Scooby Oops. Natural, but. I I still haven't seen that episode. Bro. I, I know. It was like a few seasons into. It's like, what, season 12, 13? 13. 13. 13, yeah. So I, I, I got. 
I haven't went past it's 10. It's standalone. Just watch the episode. I, I should, yeah, <laughs> totally. Oh, it's going to be just another one. Yeah, no, it's like, I yeah, definitely some great episodes in there. I really love some of the episodes. Some of those movies that came out weren't so bad either. How's it reflecting on Did you guys see, like, the... Um, Zombie Island. Zombie, Zombie Island, Island and the Cyber right. Chase. Those are the ones I like the most. Zombie Cyber Island. Chase was fantastic. I, I like really the... Like uh, that one. That one kind of I, I like the Thanksgiving one. one. I, don't, I, don't think I, I like the one. Alien one, dude. Yeah, Alien yeah that one. one's that really good. good Those yeah. four movies were such yeah. witches yeah. times. Oh yeah, yeah, I, me too. They're fun. Yeah, They're Zombie really Island was probably my first exposure to horror because, oh, uh, growing up we had the Planet Fitness, not Planet Fitness, the National Fitness Center uh -huh. over there next to Pratt's Country Store, and they had this kids area that my parents would bring me to whenever they were working out. And then we always had Zo Scooby Doo on Zombie Island on VHS that they would put on to terrify the it's kids. A horror, it's a horrifying yeah, it's movie too. Horrifying. Yeah. yeah, it's got like horror story. It's said like Louisiana. So it's like very like swampy yeah, atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, yeah, good times. Yeah, seriously. Um, yeah, one one more cheesy two thousands thing I just watched was uh, I actually watched the very first Fast and Furious. Oh yeah, how'd that hold up? The actually, one that's just about car I've racing. Heard, yeah, but you know what's funny? I, I've heard that was better than all the others. Well, would you say that? I don't know because it's more of a movie. Back yeah. in the day, I only watched. I think I've only seen the first five or six of them in total. But back in the day, you know, in the early two thousands when that came out, it just was. Vroom, 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 cars, you know. Like, oh, yeah, it's like cars racing. It's not doing car foo against... Yeah, it. <laughs> it's... Now, though, it's actually a pretty solid plot. It's a pretty solid uh -huh. movie as far as characters go, and it is a lot of driving and racing, of course, but, like, the graphics are horrible as far as CGI goes. And then... But it's such a 2000s, you know, cheesy stamp on it. Like, and I mean, as far as, like, the titles and everything, yeah. the music is... 2000s everything How and much awesome. does they mention family in the first one actually not not really uh, too much mm -hmm. not really at all it's like it's like the picking up in the middle of what they've got going on and it's like it's really interesting knowing like the, the where it goes where it goes so i'm like i'm like low-key about to watch all 10 fucking fast and furious movies dude because <laughs> like, yeah, i'm like them. i'm like all right let's see how how we get to F fast x because yeah, right? <laughs> like, i know it gets wilder and wilder you yeah know, as we go the stunts but, definitely get insane yeah. yeah but it, it feels like i mean it's just street racing in this movie you know yeah. it's nothing too crazy and it's like it's kind of got like a departed feel because you know paul walker's a cop and yeah. stuff oh, like yeah. that so yeah. it's just like a lot of it's a lot of internal drama That's the going first on. time those two movies have ever been compared well not like departed <laughs> but you know what i'm saying like, as far as like their characters like yeah who they are and stuff yeah. but I like the thriller territory. the crime yeah crime drama going on but um but yeah, it was. It I was like, oh, all right. I didn't hate this as much as I thought I was going to. This is actually not bad. I'm a, now I gotta watch Too Fast, Too Furious. Oh my God. <laughs> that's the most 1999 name. I know, movie. right? <laughs> Honestly, seriously, no, that's extremely Too Fast, Too. Yeah, no, that's that, that's like hilarious. Yeah. I like that title. I know the titles the are Tokyo so funny. Drift, Tokyo Drift, and then there's like and then the fa Fast and, and the, the Furious, fast and, furious just, and then it's like Fast Five. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, Fast Five. It's like whoa. What are these names? I had a friend that. in high school who. This shows how backwoods redneck our high school was. His uh, nickname was Tokyo Drift. Oh my God. <laughs> He's Korean. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. And he got that name because he was able to get a gutter ball while bowling while the lanes were up. Wow. Okay. Oh, bravo. Just drifted everywhere. Drifted wow. everywhere. Yeah. Well, you guys are about to drift back back out on that ice out there. Yeah, no, I'm like seriously, I'm, a, I'm slightly, my heart's slightly beating about driving down that. Just hill, but I got a bus slow, here. just yeah, just gonna, real slow. You're just gonna have to. What what's that one sport with the brooms and the rock? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's in the Olympics. Uh, crochet? No. That's crochet? Not, <laughs> yeah, crochet. <laughs> What's it? I don't, uh, shuffleboard? Shuffleboard? No, it's not shuffleboard. Oh. Cause like, I know it looks like shuffleboard. Okay, but that's it's what with I was a bunch thinking. of brooms on the ice. I don't know then. Ice brooms? I don't Lacrosse? know. Lacrosse? No. No. Yeah. That's well, listeners, chime in <laughs> whenever, you, whenever you got that information. Oh. All right, let's wrap it up. Um, well, with that said, everybody, thank you for tuning back in and. Uh, until next Listen time. Listen our goofy asses. Anything <laughs> else? Yeah. Wishless Phantom Fury on stage. <laughs> there you go. Thanks. Thanks, John. <laughs> All right, guys. We will see you next time. Until next time. <laughs>